everyone, this is the Sony a7R5, the latest full frame 61 megapixel camera body from Sony. Today, we're going to be taking out this camera out in the field to see how it performs for both photo and video in the real world. So, IAF has had a huge overhaul. It is now known as subject recognition. This camera can recognize humans, animals, birds, insects, planes, trains, and cars. So, let's get started. The a7R5 is using a new AI processing unit for the camera's subject recognition performance and we're going to see how well it works. For these tests in both stills and video mode, I'm using the GM 35mm f1.4 and my subject shift sensitivity is set to locked on. Apparently, even if the eyes and face are hidden, the camera is still able to recognize the eye's position. So I'm glad it was windy to make these autofocus tests extra difficult with my hair obscuring my face. For the most part, it is able to find the average position of my eyes or face, even if you can't see them in the frame. This camera's autofocus system is incredibly sticky. I have noticed even more advancements in autofocus compared to modern camera releases like the a7IV and a huge improvement from its predecessor, the a7R4. I did a focus test where I was standing still and captured on average 20 out of 20 photos with tack sharp focus on the iris. I did the same test walking slowly towards and away from the camera and captured an average of 17 out of 20 photos, which are great in focus ratios. I was trying to trick the autofocus while taking these portraits here and I managed to capture some incredibly impressive shots with IAF tack sharp on the iris. Let me know what you think. One thing I would like to see is the locked on focus mode to be stronger for stills. This could be happening as this is a pre-release version of the camera or maybe because subject recognition is brand new, it just needs some tweaks via firmware updates over time. But sometimes locked on worked really well and kept focus on the main subject even when there was something or someone closer to the camera. Other times it would shift focus a little too much for my liking. I love getting shots like this with my subject's arms, sleeves or dress in the foreground of the frame and I don't want it to be shifting to that when I have the focus mode set to locked on. With this new subject recognition AF, we have sub menus in stills mode where you can choose between focusing on the eye, eye slash head, eye slash head slash body for both animal and bird AF. There are also extra options like recognition sensitivity, tracking persistence level, and when you're in animal slash bird AF, you can choose for it to prioritize animals or birds. Animal AF is super sticky on cats and it did a pretty good job at recognizing where the position of the eyes are even when you can't see them. I noticed this works better when you can really tell what animal they are, so when Ollie or Evie are sitting down properly. If the animal is more obscured, the IAF point has a harder time figuring out if it's an animal or not. And again, this is when you can't see their eyes. When their eyes are in the frame, the IAF is almost always ready on their eyes, even at extreme angles. I'm also sharing some examples of Animal AF in video mode. In video, you don't have the same sub option stills mode does with face and body AF. It only keeps focus on the eye, but it does a great job at doing that. Looking through the photos I captured, there is a mixture of focus, but please keep in mind that these photos are at close distance and wide open at f1.4, so it is harder to focus compared to say typical wildlife photography situations where you would be on a long lens with a smaller aperture. I noticed I had an impressive in-focus ratio when the cats were sitting still. There is perfect focus on Evie's iris and you can also see me taking a picture in the reflection. When the girls would be moving a bit quicker, that's when I have a mixed ratio of focus where some would be tack sharp on the iris and some would be more focused on their fur. Insect subject recognition is really cool. I found this hornet working on her nest. And by the way, these shots here are handheld on a 90 millimeter macro lens. While the autofocus is not perfect, sometimes it would include the nest in the autofocus box. It definitely makes it so easy and quick to capture insect photo and video. And I'm really happy with the shots that I got of her. I am so excited for this. So check this out. When we look at the screen in the back, we can now tilt it out and we can also flip it 
and we can do it at the same time. That is so cool. I'm so excited about this multi-angled LCD screen that we have. The Sony a7R5 is about as heavy as the A1 at 723 grams. It has the same dual layered mode dial as the a7 IV and the same endless scroll exposure compensation dial, which can be customized to whatever you want. I have mine set to white balance. These two dials, which I personally really love, look like they might be a new standard for Sony camera bodies since we are now seeing it in two consecutive bodies with the a7IV and now the a7R5. Speaking of standard, the grip and body itself feels like a mixture between the a7R4, the a7IV and a7S III. It's very comfortable to hold with its wider grip. We have dual UHS-2 and dual CF Express Type A card slots. It uses the FZ100 battery and has a full-sized HDMI port. Of course, we have this amazing full-access multi-angle LCD screen, which I hope also becomes a Sony standard. I am so excited about this screen. The camera shares the same 9.44 million dot EVF as the A1, but only refreshes up to 120 FPS like the A7S III and not 240 FPS like the A1. For our photo shoot today, I'm starting off with the GM 50mm f1.2. I'm using a wide focus area this entire time to let the camera do all the work with autofocus to see what kind of results we get. I'll be including comparison photos between other camera bodies to have a look at. I have comparisons with other Sony bodies, but also Canon and Fujifilm too. As always, I want to say thank you to Sony Australia for getting this camera in my hands early, but this video is not sponsored by Sony. They lend me the camera to use and that is it. They don't ask me to say anything, they don't review my video, so all thoughts and opinions are totally my own. And then let's go down a little bit more into the trees. If you stand just in here, we can get some of the leaves and then also that house in the background. You might be able to see it. So this is just from head to toe. So for this one, you can like pace around a little bit if you want. You can kind of like, yeah, just move around. That's perfect. The Sony a7R5 has a 61 megapixel back illuminated XMOL R CMOS sensor and the same Bion's XR image processing engine as you'll find in the a7 IV and A1. The main brand new feature we are seeing in the a7R5 system is the AI processing unit we just took a look at and you'll be able to keep seeing how it works in a real world setting at this photo shoot by keeping an eye on the picture in picture. My assumption is that this is the autofocus we'll be seeing from now on in Sony's flagship cameras and I'm wondering if they are going to keep the current IAF system for their lower or mid-tier cameras instead. Do you want to try like a little walking shot if you walk kind of towards my camera and I'll walk backwards and hopefully I won't trip on anything. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Oh that's so pretty! Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> I'm like, oh, it's right there. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna just like hold down the shutter. Okay. okay. I'm sharing 100% crops of the straight out of camera images I'm taking. Please remember, I only have access to the JPEGs at the moment as there is no raw compatibility just yet. That will come in a few weeks. So all of these are JPEGs that we're taking a look at. The image quality from the a7R5 is absolutely beautiful. Like, wow, I'm amazed with how beautiful these files look. They have such a nice silky uh, characteristic to them. I'm loving the new image processing look which started with the a7S III and we then saw in the A1, A7IV and now the a7R5. Mix that in with these really detailed high resolution files and the photos are just so crisp and clear. Something to note is the a7R4 is also 61 megapixels so we haven't had any updates there. I personally think they should only make a higher megapixel camera if it can shoot at least the same or better in low light with high ISOs. I have a low light ISO test and comparison with the a7R4 a little later on to look at. The a7R5 has 693 phase detection autofocus points and can shoot up to 10 frames per second in compressed RAW. 
I'm being extremely liberal with how many photos I'm taking to see how the buffer is, if the autofocus can keep up, and just to see how it feels like using this camera on location. Even when taking burst photos of Pearl walking around, I am very impressed the buffer never got in the way of our photo shoot. Every moment I wanted to take a photo, I was able to, and I never felt held back by the speed of the buffer or the camera. I tried both V90s and CF Express Type A cards during the photo shoot, and I was shooting in RAW plus JPEG. We've taken a look at a few of the images I've been shooting so far, and you can see so far they are really tack sharp on the iris, even though I am shooting wide open at f1.2. Just like the Sony a7 III, a7 IV, and a7 R4, the 7R5 has 15 stops of dynamic range. I have been shooting in both RAW plus JPEG, so I will upload a new video when I finally have access to the RAWs, and we can take a better look at those files. I will do like another walking shot if you want it to start, just like here-ish. <laughs> And we'll, um, I know, I might just shoot and like look that way. By the way, you can download a sample gallery of a few straight out of camera photos I took. I've included landscape shots, animal AF photos, and other random images. You can find that download link on my blog, which I'll leave linked in the description for you. Since the a7R5 has this new autofocus engine, I thought it would be interesting to take portraits with sunglasses to try and obscure Pearl's eyes. During the photo shoot, IAF was super sticky on her eyes. Just like the human subject recognition examples I was sharing earlier, the camera caught some very impressive photos in focus. This is one of my favorite photos to show what autofocus can do, where we have a prominent reflection on the sunglasses and she's looking to the side, but it still caught focus on her iris. The autofocus performance of the a7R5 sits in between two Sony camera bodies from my personal experience. It's faster, stickier, and more accurate than the IAF of the a7IV. And while it might be stickier and has more detailed options, it's not as fast as the human IAF of the A1. As you could see with some of the walking shots that I captured of Pearl, there are some where she is slightly out of focus because she's walking towards the camera. Dan is using both the GM24 1.4 and the GM50 1.2. These shots are all handheld and he is only relying on human IAF. The A7R5 can film in 4K, 24, 25, 30, 50, and 60p and uses 10-bit 422 color sampling. 4K, 24, 25, and 30p is full frame. When you switch to 50 or 60p 4K, it induces roughly a 1.25 crop. You can also film in 8K in 24 or 25p. This makes use of 10-bit 420 color sampling and has the same 1.25 crop. The autofocus doesn't skip a beat. It is impressively sticky on Pearl and consistent with both prime lenses. We made sure to capture lots of walking shots to be able to see AF and IBIS performance. You can see a little bit of IBIS jitter in some of the shots since they are handheld, but overall I think stabilization looks good. The R series, in my opinion, has always been a stills camera, but they've now made a huge leap in quality for video. Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah, I just took a picture first. <laughs> I thought you were putting it on. I can easily see the A7R5 being used professionally by videographers. Of course, I tried to see if we can overheat the camera. Using an external battery and the LCD screen flipped out most of the time during this recording, I was able to record 2 hours and 46 minutes of 8K footage until my memory cards ran out of space. The heat warning symbol appeared on the screen about halfway through the recording, but it only stopped because of the memory cards. I then formatted the cards and continued recording in 8K with the LCD closed for about another hour until my external battery died. So I tried my best, but I wasn't able to get the camera to stop recording, stop shooting, or turn off from overheating. The A7R5 includes focus breathing compensation, which induces a very minor crop. You can choose between having stabilization off, standard, or active. Active induces a crop, and it only works in 4K, not 8K. comparison ISO photos between the a7R4 versus the a7R5 at every single ISO available. These are the straight out of camera JPEGs from both cameras and I set noise reduction to normal. I would say the noise level is about the same between both cameras. 
it looks like they have made a minor improvement with the noise reduction processing. The A7R5 has less colorful noise compared to the A7R4. In saying that, when you look at a high ISO image side by side, the A7R files look a little desaturated because of this. In a real world setting, higher ISO images from both camera bodies have a watercolor, almost oil painting look, which I'm not a huge fan of. I have a few more photos to share from our photo shoot right at the end here. In my opinion, the A7R5 is a significant improvement from the A7R4 if you're deciding whether to upgrade or not. The autofocus system is solid and the image quality is beautiful even with straight out of camera JPEGs. I do find it interesting that Sony have introduced some of these features like the overhauled autofocus with subject recognition and the multi-angle LCD screen in a camera like the A7R5 rather than an A1 Mark II for example. But they are still very welcome features that I'm looking forward to seeing in more of their flagship camera bodies. So that is all I have for today's review of the Sony A7R5. I'd love to know what you think of the camera and of our photo shoot and video down in the comments below. But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.